So thank you very much. Yes, uh, this is a talk about uh, weather radar systems and other like radars that can also do imaging. So uh, I just started from radar definition, which already has been done by Fuzi and the others. So I'm not going through that. So now you know everyone knows that what is radar and it has different applications. And so in military weather sensing, automotive, and in car, which will be the next start by Gabriel for in car. But now I'm focusing on weather sensing, and there also we are doing kind of imaging because you can just imagine that we would have, we are using radars to kind of make some images from the clouds and then estimate some parameters like reflectivity, rainfall, and so on. So this is another commercial use of radars that may be interesting. And there we have some specific requirements that I would like to quickly go through them. Uh, Fuzia just uh, category, categorized different applications of radar like SAR, GPR, and the other applications. And now I'm just looking from that perspective from another point of view, waveform that these kind of radars can use. In principle, I can say that we can have two types of waveforms. One is continuous wave and the other is pulse wave. And then in continuous wave, it means that we do have one like transmitter. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, how can I come back? How can I go back? Just for pushing this one. Oh, yes. So we do have a, like a transmitter. And in principle, we should have a receiver to receive. So we have in whatever is CW radars, we should have transmit antennas and receive antennas separately. But in a pulse kind of radar, we use one antenna for both transmission and receiver. So in some amount of time, we are transmitting, then we make a switch and then we do that. So then if you are using pulse radar, the transmission in principle you cannot receive anything. So we would have some thing which is called a line branch. So some range that we cannot detect objects. But then since there is a good isolation between transmitter and receiver, we can have high transmit power in the transmit side. But in CW radar, in general, we cannot have because we cannot make that isolation. So that is the reason that lots of radars which are used for indoor or like automotive and these kind of things they are using cw they have different antennas for transmitting and receiving so there is no beline range there but in the other applications like military and weather radar when we need to have long ranges typically we are using like pulse kind of waveforms so these are two weather radars just to have uh, some understanding of how that should look like. And these are some weather observers. And this is a radar which is located in Germany nearby. And these are some uh, weather observations that they can detect. So, so you see that kind of imaging happens. And these images uh, have to be like one uh, yeah, where probably these kind of uh, like uh, reflections are more strong and then probably we can recognize the uh, type of like uh, weather phenomena there. So what is waveform in general? You saw that we had two different kind of signal, continuous wave and then uh, like pulse wave, but then Waveform definition that we are using for the waveform is kind of modulation that we are using inside that pulse that can be in the frequency, phase, or in the amplitude. But typically in radar, amplitude modulation cannot be used because it has some uh, linearity, like it makes some distortions for the power amplifier and then power amplifiers typically are working in saturation. So we are interested to use some waveforms which have constant amplitude. So it means that we are limited to this phase modulation and frequency modulation. 
And uh, what is pulse compression? So you saw that we have some pulse and now we have a terminology that is called pulse compression it means that if we are using some modulation inside the waveform, then we may have some benefits because in principle, we can use the, we can have the benefits of transmitting a long pulse while we can have a resolution of uh, short pulse. So that is the effect of pulse compression just intuitively. I'm showing that with some uh, pictures here. Assume that this is a pulse radar that right now we are talking. So we are transmitting in some certain amount of time and then we are using the antenna for reception. If we are using some kind of called simple pulse, means that the bandwidth of the radar is related to the uh, to the pulse duration. And then time bandwidth product is kind of equal to one. But as soon as we are using some modulation inside the pulse that could be in the phase or in the frequency, then the time bandwidth will increase this because then, for example, for the like uh, for the phase modulation, the bandwidth will be related to the amount of change in the phase that we are doing that amount of time. And then this time bandwidth product is the division of this T to that cheap time, which is much greater than one. And that is the same things for the frequency modulation. We have a change in the frequency and then time bandwidth product is greater than one. And that produces uh, some gain for the detection. And this is pulse compression is something that almost all the radars already have, but this is not the case for weather radars because there we have a big challenge. Okay, just to make things more complicated, I mean, more like completed, I have, we have another definition for multiple antennas. We have this kind of phased array radars, which in principle just using one waveform in the transmit side, even though that they have multiple antennas, but they are just transmitting one waveform. And then we have MIMO radars that every transmit antenna can transmit a different waveform. Right now we are looking to the, to a like weather radar, which in principle has one transmit antenna, one receive antenna. So a CISO case, but even though that this is, this should not looks like a very complicated system, but still doing pulse compression there is challenging. So pulse compression from mathematical point of view is that we are assumed that this X vector X is something like a waveform that we are transmitting. And then in the receive side, as described earlier in the earlier talk, we are doing some kind of match filtering or mismatch filtering or whatever. So we do have some autocorrelation in the receive side. And then we are interested to have that autocorrelation as earlier discussed to have low side loss, which could be defined with two metrics like PSL minimum. We want to minimize the maximum side loss of autocorrelation for the non-zero lag or integrated side loss level energy of all the side loss. So this is uh, intuitively shows that what is the pulse compression. There is some primary target that could be some other targets which can be less than the some peak soil of level that we have. Then if we just decrease the threshold, we may have some pulse target. If we just increase the detection threshold, we may have and uh, we may miss the target. So that is the case. So we are interested to have some waveforms which are uh, which have very good soil of levels. So this is one application of waveform design in general. There are lots of other applications like a spectral shaping that yesterday you could have seen with the demo that we had here. Like for example, there is a communication system working in some spectrum domains and radar wants to avoid that frequencies and then use the waveform design to do a spectral shaping. Or like transmit beam pattern shaping. There is a concept that comes for the automotive radar systems for the imaging radars. There we are trying to kind of beam form the transmitters to specific directions that we want kind of enhancing like the earlier work that kind of estimate, kind of improving the uh, estimation accuracy. But now we are talking about these type of radars which have some transmitters which are typically this big and some receive units and these antenna, dish antennas that are transmitting and also receiving in the same time. Different frequency bands are dedicated for them, S-band, C-band, and X-band, and there are reasons for using that. 
but just to know some numbers, the peak power that they are using for the simple parse currently for S band is something around 750 kilowatt. And then you see for the C band and also you see for the X band, which the peak power is quite large. And then these kind of radars, as you can see, they do have different like horns and then they are working in dual polarization transmitting in both vertical and horizontal. Uh, there is a difference for the radar equation of these kind of radars. Uh, this is a simple radar equation where all these things are radar parameters, wavelengths, antenna gain, transmit power, and there is something for point targets, which is um, which is RCS reflection from that. For the distributed objects, we do not have one object, one point in the resolution cell. We have multiple scatterers. So a summation of all these reflection will create uh, some reflection for us that using some definition like the points that are contributing in the volume, then we can define the volume, how much is that? And then we can define the uh, like radar uh, equation for the distributed targets. And then uh, that shows that, okay, the equation probably for the distributed target is not um, the received power is not related to the force power of the range. It will be related to the uh, inverse of S square power of the range because some volumes also comes to the point. So it means that in principle, first of all, using pulse comparison for weather radar maybe is not that effective that it is for other application. And the other thing is that not always in radar application, we are interested to estimate this like reflectivity. Okay, maybe with some other definitions, I can say that this is really the drop size, a summation of the drop size. And then this is called reflectivity in weather radar. And not always in all application, we are interested to estimate the amplitude of the received signal. Typically in radar, we in lots of applications, we are just interested to know that if there is a target or not. But in the imaging application, we are also estimated to accurately, we are also interested to accurately estimate the amplitude. So in that cases, uh, the challenges are that first of all, the receiver should be linear because any non-linearity in the receiver may provide some fluctuation in our estimation. And the other thing is that if the transmit waveform has a certain uh, like side lobes, that side lobes may decrease the efficiency of the estimation. And then the amplitude that you are estimating will be used for other like parameter estimation in weather radar. For example, rain rate. Rain rate is here, it is R and is related to that Z, which was reflectivity and we were estimating. So that is a critical parameter. So. Uh, when we want to estimate that parameter, we should know that how much dynamic range these parameters can have. This is again another like reflectivity values in dBz, so that Z just is converted to the dB, and then you see that uh, this is another real like data that you can see, and then you see that you can see sometimes some reflectivity around 65, 70 dB, and sometimes around like 5 to 10 dB. So more than 60 dB always it is something that always happening. So means that the range silos of the waveform that you be are using should be typically better than this 60. So if we want to do imaging for weather radar, the range side lobes of the waveform should be as small as possible. And that 60, 70 dB are just some typical values. Then we come to some optimization problem based on whatever metric that we are defining. If you want to design a waveform, there are multiple tools that some of them are listed here. And here I'm just using a U, I'm just showing the use of block coordinate descent approach, which yesterday also was talked about the coordinate descent. And now I'm talking about block coordinate descent together with another approach, which is majorization, minimization, and then in general, this called the successive upper bound minimization. And then we can have, whenever we have some optimization problem, we can have lots of constraint, 
And uh, one of them, which is important for radar applications, as we discussed, was a constant modulus in the like the in the waveform itself, and that makes the problem always difficult. Uh, block coordinate descent. Yesterday, it was discussed about if we have a function of n variables, we can just select one of the variables and solve the optimization problem based on that only variable. Oh. Then we can go to the next variable and the next variable and so on. That makes a complicated problem simpler. So we are breaking that problem to simple problems and then we are able to solve. And typically you don't need to, unlike the gradient design, you don't need to any step size to use. There is another optimization approach, which is called majorization minimization. There, instead of directly solving a difficult problem, you can find the surrogate function and then you can minimize the surrogate function. And then we have block successive upper bound minimization where it is a combination of block coordinate descent and majorization minimization. So you combine these two, means that if you want to minimize a function of X, which X has lots of blocks, some blocks, instead of minimizing that function, you are finding some measurizer in every step related to one block of that object. So this is the tool that we can use as an effective tool. And if we want to see intuitively what happens, if this is Fx related to one variable that has been selected, instead of solving or minimizing this F directly, we can find another objective function like U. And then we can minimize U and find another point in F. And then we can just continue like that. And then this is the idea of the like, uh, be some approach in principle. This is the algorithm. I just explained that. And then sometimes you should uh, decide when to uh, stop and how to uh, stop. And depending to the problem nature, it can also be guaranteed the convergence. So this is the approach that we want to use. And then again, there is some criteria is that how to choose the variable that you want to optimize, and I'm not going through the details. Now we have some waveform optimization problem. That, for example, this could be the maximum side lobe of the autocorrelation function or the integrated side lobe level of all the autocorrelation side lobes. And then using this uh, approach of block uh, B sum that I introduced, we can just minimize the objective function. I'm not going through the details of the mathematic, but we can write the SNR and then we can find the like match filter output and then mismatch filter output. And then we can define the optimization problem. And then we can see that there will be some optimization problem, which is dependent to the signal that we are transmitting and the receive filter. So we would like to minimize this kind of objective function. And a typical solution when we have multiple variables is to do alternative optimization, means that keeping one variable picks, optimizing based on the other, and then doing the alternate. For the mismatch PS PSL problem, we will have some min max problem like that. This has been already shown that it can be converted to some kind of uh, LP norm problem. Instead of min max, we are getting rid of that max problem, and then we are minimizing some um, LP norm problem. And then using uh, the block, uh, the this, the upper bound, we can just say write the we can just write the problem based on one variable, and then we can just convert that based on uh, some like surrogate function, we can find the surrogate function using this lemma, and then we can convert that problem which is related to the power of P to some other problem which is related to the power of two, and then we can solve the problem iteratively. So I'm not going through the details, just showing some results of doing that, and then what happens. So uh, first of all, uh, there was a company, Italian company, who is building weather radars and now trying to use pulse compression in his products. And then uh, they had a radar which is not equipped with pulse compression, so it's capturing raw data. And then we wanted to try this new waveform with that raw data. So what we did, we 
we received raw data, I mean, INQ from un uh, uncoded parts from this company, and then we convert our design waveform with that. And then we did, uh, we kind of convert our design filter with the new signal, and then we kind of evaluated the performance. This radar was operating in the expand with 25 kilowatt transmit power and different characteristics. What is the benefit of doing that? Means that instead of later, if we can, if you show that you can use pulse compression there, they can reduce this peak power because they are obtaining some processing gain. And by reducing that, the cost of building radar will be reduced significantly. So this is the benchmark means that the current radar output in terms of reflectivity. And these are different techniques. Some of them we purpose is three below, and some of them are other techniques in the literature. And then we show that, okay, the images that we could obtain are kind of close to the benchmark, even though that you can see that some artifacts, depending to whatever method is used, is introduced in certain range and angles. So that was the reflectivity that you saw. This is radial velocity, which is kind of Doppler. Again, you can see that the same observation you can see. There is a differential phase between the dual polarization that that radar had. So you can also look at this artifact again is coming, even though there are lots of places, they are the same. The reason is that you saw there is also correlation coefficient. You see the same observation. The reason is that when we are using this pulse compression waveform, as I described earlier, there is some times that we cannot transmit. So in that times that we cannot transmit, we are not receiving any reflection, but there is a way to do partial correlation, it means that we know that, okay, we are not, we have transmitted, we are not receiving, but after some time we are receiving some reflection. And here we are doing partial correlation to recover and depending to the signal and, wave and the filter that we are using, this partial correlation may have different effects. So that was the blind range that I was describing. And then we kind of analyzed blind range more accurately with the simulation. And we saw that, okay, these are different effects depending to the waveform and the thing that you can use. Another alternative approach is to use two different pulse. One is uncoded pulse for the blind range and the other is, and the other is like the coded pulse. So that was the end of the story. So waveform design, could be an alive challenge depending to the application and can have some effect in the imaging performance. And different approaches were introduced here. Thank you very much. Uh, we in our radar group have some open positions for postdoc and PhD students. And if you have so many connections, you are interested them to join us. Thank you. Thank you. So questions from the audience? I'm sure you have. <laughs> so Mohammed, I have kind of a naive question. So if you know, as you know, I've never done weapon optimization for radar. And so I understand that in like specific challenge, like in specific application where you're like a structural environment or when you're, when you look for the army, you want your, um, waveform to have like specific behavior and specific properties. But when you want to do, for example, weather radar and the cloud doesn't have any specific structure, how, what, how does this like optimized wave, waveform compares to just generating randomly from the alphabet that you have? Yeah, when you are generating some like waveforms with random alphabet, then the side lobes of them is not under your control. And since that you don't know that where is the target, then that side lobe may make some harmful effect on the estimation accuracy. So in principle, you need to keep the side lobes as low as possible because you don't have any information about the scene. And that optimization is exactly what you are doing here. We say that, okay, we want to keep the main loop in the same place. So it means that, okay, we can use match filter without any loss. 
for some mismatch filter, which are not making significant loss in the like peak, peak, peak of the reflections. But then we are minimizing the side loss. And when we are minimizing side loss, means that there is the adjacent targets cannot make any mistake for us. They cannot flip the, 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 the picture that I showed that for the object that can send in that is it. Yeah, but in the sense of when what you're doing is here, whether it are this notion of one target and other target is a bit more like tenuous yeah, yeah, in some sense. Exactly. That is even more worse in that case because when the scene is as false, then the probability of this happening will be reduced. When the scene is like that, whether it means that when you have this raining, then lots of places are there. And then you have everywhere different, let's say, targets with different reflectivities. So in that case, you should be more careful. And that is the reason that even uh, lots of radars, which are built right now for weather application, they are not using fast compares. Okay, thank you. Any more? Well, in that case, let's give, uh, give it another hand. Thank you.